my name is Confident. Welcome to our mathematics session and I chose to focus on grade 11 and also it is a very 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 important foundation for grade 12. Even those who are doing their mathematics and four, this is an important section if ever you are struggling with the general solution intrigue. Now the general solution carries some good marks especially for your metric and this is the foundation in case you didn't understand your grade 11 work. Sometimes some of these questions are asked as they are even in grade 12. So I will encourage you to go through all these lessons. There are five lessons. So this is part one. So go through each and every part and you are going to understand how these questions are asked in different ways. So the five questions I brought are totally different and they require a different approach. If you master them, you will never have a problem when it comes to this general solution intrigue. Now let us look at our first question. Uh, it says we need to determine the general solution of the following equation. And just look at the mark allocation. This is 8 marks and this question was taken from one of the previous papers. So it is something that you can find also in your exam. It says you, we are given here, remember it's general solution. So we are given 210x is equal to 5 sin, sin, or sin x. So how do we solve that? Um, if I can write it again uh, to say you are given 210x is equal to 5 uh, sin x. Now the first thing is you need to know your trick, your trick algebra in some way. Now what you know is the identity for 10. Remember 10x is equal to sin x over cos x. So that is what you are going to substitute where there is 10 there. So that's what you're going to do. So if we use this identity then we're going to have 2 now where there is 10 put a bracket you have your sine x over cos x is equal to 5 sine x i hope you're able to see that so this is um as i said it's your trick algebra in this case uh, you just have to know your, your algebra as well as your trigonometry. Now, sometimes it can be, I just want to show you the error that is common in students, but let me first solve it in this way. When you are given that, remember, the aim is to find the general solution. So we can multiply this side, just for space, I can multiply by uh, cos x, and then multiply also by cos x. So what I'm trying to do is to remove this fraction here so that I have two, um, I have two sine x is equal to, so that's what I want to do to, 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 to show you there. It is equal to five sine x and cos x. All right, so this is what we are having uh, in this case. Now, sometimes students are tempted. This is what you must not do. Remember, I'm doing it in red so that I can, uh, uh, to show you that this is not correct. So some students, they then divide by sine x and they divide by sine x so that sine x and sine x will cancel and here it will cancel and they will have 2 is equal to 5 cos x. Now, it looks like you are going ahead, but what you need to know is you have, uh, you have already lost sine x. So never divide by a variable. Never divide by cos or sine because you are going to lose that sine or cos. So this method is wrong. What must you do? Let me uh, go backwards. Whenever you are faced with this scenario, the next step to do is to factorize. Remember, you need 
to factorize in this case. So what you need to do is to take this part, all that part to the uh, other side. So you'll have 2 sine x. Now it will be minus 5 sine x cos x. Then you will have equal to 0. Then at that stage, it is where I'm saying you can now factorize. You see, you've got sin x, you've got sin x. So you can take it out there as common, which is your sine x. And when you factorize, what you'll be left with, remember what you're simply doing when you're factorizing, you're dividing by sine x and you're dividing by sine x. So it will cancel, it will cancel. That's what we mean by factorizing. So you'll be left with two and this side you'll be left with minus five cos x. So it is basically what you're doing there. So now, not to make my weight clumsy. So what we do, then we have got two minus five cos x. You need to know factorization at this stage. And then is equal to zero. Now, when you have done that, this is the proper way to do it. So you've got two answers here. The first one is either this part, which is your sine x, Either your sine x is equal to that, which is zero, and then or two minus five cos x is equal to zero. You understand? So basically, it's like when you're given, if you still remember, if I say x, x plus one is equal to zero, how do you solve it? You are saying either that x is equal to zero, or that x plus 1 is equal to 0. This is identical to what we are having in that particular scenario. So just remember, that's what you need to be doing in that case. So how do you continue then solving that? You have then on the, um, the first one, which is sine x, you have got uh, to find x now. Therefore, x is equal to arc sine zero therefore x is equal to if we find x sine zero it's just shift x sine zero it will give us also zero so we've got zero as an angle now zero degrees then we need now to write this in the general form remember the question says we need to find the general solution that is where now it comes back to the general solution problem so now with sine i just want to show you through the uh, cast diagram if i have a cast diagram of sine remember this is zero this is 90 this is 180 this is 270 this is 360. now if you look um between let me just mark this between zero and 180 uh, if I take my calculator and say sine 0, it gives me 0. And then sine 180, it gives me 0. And then sine 360, it gives me a 0. So you will see that um, in a way, half, remember, half of the revolution, I get a 0. And another half of the revolution, I get a 0. So for you now to be able to to come up with the general solution. You can see that sine moves in for every 180, it is a zero. So you can write your answer now like this to say, x is equal to that angle, theta, which is zero degrees, plus k, 180 degrees. Because you saw that it is, um, the, the number of times you are multiplying k, but there is a condition here where k must be an element of real numbers. Now, if I take my calculator and say, if, for example, I make, remember, real numbers are positive and negative numbers, like minus 1, if I say 0 plus negative 1, uh -huh, and 180, I will get... Um, 180 then if I say sign that answer of negative 180 you see it's zero or let me do it once if I say sign zero plus let's say my k was 
positive 2 bracket 180 let's close it twice you see I'm getting a 0 you can change k to become negative 3 again it will give us a 0 so you don't have to write it in terms of k360 in this case sign 0 I and mean 0 we are getting 0 for every 180 degrees for every 180 we, we get a, a, a 0 for sign so this is the first part when they're saying the general solution now let us look at the second one the second one says um, here we have got 2 is equal to I have to take this to the other side which is 5 cos x then I divide by 5 on both sides therefore what I have here is I'll say therefore cos x which was on my right hand side is equal to 2 over 5 then how do I find x x is equal to arc cos in calculator it's shift cos so it's arc cos 2 over 5 and then the calculator will give us the value of x so if I do that, it will be shift across um, 2 over 5. And the answer that I got uh, for 2, remember you need to round off your answers to 2 decimal places. So you can see it's 66,42. You can round off with the calculator, you press shift, then you go to 6 where it's fixed, and then you put it to 2 decimal places. You see it can do it for you, 66,42. So we have now this we call it our um let me just use another pen we call this our reference angle ref angle so this is your reference reference angle it is always acute or it is less than 90 degrees you'll see in the other coming lessons why it is important to put it like that now when i have done that the next thing i need to do is to now write the general solution of that particular cost remember we're dealing with cost so for the general solution x is equal to that reference angle 66,42 now again let me show you with my cost diagram now with the cost diagram i have cost now it says all students remember tech chemistry now cost is positive in the first quadrant and cos is positive in the fourth quadrant so this is quadrant number one this is quadrant number four now I will encourage you to grab hold of my lessons I did almost two or three lessons on the cos diagram you need to understand it so that it's a good foundation so that you can be able to uh, at this stage understand what I'm doing here so just check the videos before on the cos diagram you will be able then to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing now then moving on, we are saying cos is positive in quadrant number one and in quadrant number four. And then we have reduction rules for quadrant number four. And the reduction rule for quadrant number four is 360 minus theta. That's the reduction rule that we find in quadrant number four. Now in the first quadrant, it's less than 90. So it's you leave it as is. Um, when you're doing a general solution so as i said it will be x is equal to 66,42 degrees then you say plus k 360 that is how you do the first general solution and then you have to tell us that k is an element that condition is very important if you don't put the condition they'll penalize your mark k is an element of real numbers that is the first part but the answers are not complete we have to find the second set of answers which is found remember k, uh, cos is positive this is the first quadrant i'll say first quadrant this is the answer for the first quadrant what about for the second quadrant now the answers for the second quadrant you don't need to show this i'm just trying to make you understand what i'm doing so it will be x is equal to then you take that 360 minus theta but your theta remember is 66 that reference angle this is your theta which is your x in other words so remember that so it will be 360 
minus my reference angle which is 66 comma 42 and then you continue and say plus k360 you don't need to cram it you just have to know what is the reduction rule for each quadrant once you know the cast diagram the answers are easier from this stage therefore you need to simplify that further where you will say 360 minus 66 comma 42 and then you will get um 293 comma 58 so this 293 comma 58 degrees plus k 360 is the second set of uh, the answers under the general solution for cost so you've got that and you have got that um, okay not that one you have got this one now I forgot the condition on the second one as I said if you forget the condition they'll penalize your mark remember K is an element of Z that is very 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 important now let me check if I also did here for sine yes I did for sine to say sine x is equal to 0 degrees plus k180 where k is an element of z so the answers are the ones that I did circle when they say general solution we are looking at all these three circled answers in that case now someone can argue for example I just want to show you for sine if you wanted to follow the cast diagram for sine here where it was sine zero you can also do it like this let me just show you now sine is um sine zero the thing is, is the, the challenge with the zero is that it lies on the line we've got zero we have 180 we have got uh, 90 you have got uh, 270 so now if you are trying to do it in quadrant form remember we said these are the, the, the main parts where sine is zero. So now you could have done um, in a way to say here it's um, actually for sine 180, actually this is the answer. Let me not confuse everything. Let me just leave it as is because uh, I'll end up complicating things. So now this is the way I will encourage you to approach it. If you can get hold of this kind of of the problem whether you've got a sign and cost you deal with sign separately find the general solution deal with cost separately find the general solution if sign is zero it lies on that and the answer for sign zero will always be in this format the others can always change but as you continue with our lesson i'll show you how these are changing we've come to the end of our section join me again in the next part two of this lesson thank you Thank you.